Okay, so in yesterday's video, I spoke about newly elected US Congressman George Santos and all of the scandals surrounding his biography and ancestry and potentially his criminal record. And it was interesting reading through some of your comments. Meghan Markle better up her game. Uh, I see what you did there, because I, I have made a lot of videos about Meghan Markle in the past and um, he, he's kind of narcissistic and I guess so is Meghan. Um... What about South Park? South Park? I'm not sure what's that. I mean, I'm talking about US Congressman George Santos and South Park. I don't know how that... Do I see Meghan Markle's vice president running mate in George Santos for 2024? <laughs> I think I do. Oh, yeah. Meghan again. I, I, but in this video, I'm, I'm just focusing on George... Sa this George Santos guy reminds me of Meghan Markle. Right. Good. Uh, the thing is, in this video, what I'm going to do, what I'm trying to do with the channel here is I'm trying to expand into... I'd like to put George and Megan in a room together and just listen. Right. So what I was going to say... Are you sure he's not related to the Princess of Montecito? I recognise the familiarity. This congressman falsely claimed that his grandparents fled the Holocaust. Role model for Prince Harry. Tell me you heard about the South Park episode last night. All right, well, why don't we have a compromise? Please do a video on the South Park episode on the Prince and Princess of Canada. All right. Uh, okay, you you win. I'll... Ha <laughs> ha, entertaining commentary on Santos. But please recap South Park's worldwide privacy... Shut up! I said I'll do it. I, I said okay. So I guess it's finally happened. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have pushed it too far and they have sealed their status as living memes. Once South Park come after you, you're beyond the pale. I think what South Park taking the piss out of you represents is the fact that the counterculture, not the mainstream media, not the pearl clutching chattering classes, but everything that's kind of cool about culture has sort of gone, hang on, who are these two dickheads? And that's something that mainstream still don't understand. They can manipulate the narrative to a point. Let's take Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. They could have had it so that most people just didn't care enough to really understand anything about the backstory. Probably most people wouldn't have cared who was in the right or wrong if they had just left the royal family and gone off to California and the people would have been like, well, what happened there? Oh, I think someone said something racist. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Uh, nobody would care. But if you keep beating everyone over the head with it for three years, you will awaken the beast. The counterculture will come for you. And it seems strange calling South Park the counterculture after 25 years of sustained mainstream success. But essentially, they've never changed the formula of what made them famous in the first place. And that was their ability as writers, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, to look at all of the things that form part of our everyday narrative, our culture, and just say, hang on a minute, that's bullshit. <laughs> they always use the same metaphor, the emperor with no clothes. That's exactly what South Park are great at. All they do is look around them and go, hang on a minute, What's going on there? Fuck them. They're as relevant and irreverent as they ever were. And with Harry and Meghan, they've hit the nail on the head again. Ugh, cringe. I just watched the last minute and a half of my video and, uh, what the fuck am I making? Is this like a BBC4 documentary? The counterculture. The pearl-clutching, chattering classes. The zeitgeist. <laughs> They're so irreverent. Prick. Let's, uh, let's check out some clips from South Park. Maybe that'll be uh, funny or entertaining. It has been several months now since our beloved Queen has died. All Canadians are finding it hard to go on. All Canadians, that is, except for our first guest, the Prince and his wife. We, we want, want privacy. privacy! We, we want, want privacy! privacy. Hey, thanks for having us on the show. It's so awesome to be here, it's great. So let me start with you, sir. You've lived a life with the royal family, you've had everything handed to you, but you say your life has been hard, and now you've written all about it in your new book, We. <laughs> Quite. How poignant. This art form, illustrated so spectacularly by the makers of South Park, is known as parody. The concept of parody was invented by the ancient Greeks. Ah, don't worry, I'm not that much of a hack. What do you think this is? Philomena Kunk. Philomena Kunk. Kunk on Earth. What should have been a two-minute sketch getting turned into a six-part documentary series. 
What idiot funded that? 50 minute episodes of a woman telling the same joke over and over again, but with different words. The ancient Romans were a particularly industrious civilization. And industrious means proper hard working. The agricultural techniques used by the Babylonians were very advanced for the time. So their cows probably had proper big tits. Ha! Yes, that's right, friend. You see, my wife and I are totally like you should write a book because your family like stupid and then so are like journalists. So you hate journalists. That's right. And now you wrote a book that reports on the lives of the royal family. Right. So you're a journalist. Yeah, I think this is a good scene to focus on because uh, they do succinctly, they get it absolutely right. It's in a few sentences, they completely unravel any defense that one could have of um, Prince Harry and, and Meghan. And there I am again, doing my BBC4 documentary voice again, aren't I? Succinctly, they're so succinct on, on South Park, aren't they? They unravel any defense one could have. God, I hate myself. It's just so hard to be genuine on camera, you know, you're either, uh, you, that, that's what happens, you know, you've got someone like Philomena Kunk pretending to be stupid, but in a way that lets people know I'm not really stupid because I'm making a documentary about ancient history, but at the same time I'm talking in my Bolton monotonous regional accent like that, and then I say a stupid thing at the end of every sentence to make myself look self-deprecating, but really I'm not, I think I'm fucking hilarious. And you've got the other extreme, some arsehole using big words like succinct all the time, you know? You know what I'm on about, don't you? Yeah. We just want to be normal people. All this attention is so hard. Isn't it true, sir, that your questionable wife has her own TV show and hangs out with celebrities and does fashion magazines? What are you suggesting? Well, I just think some people might say that your Instagram-loving bitch wife actually doesn't want her privacy. How dare you, sir? My Instagram-loving bitch wife has always wanted her privacy! <laughs> I actually laughed out loud at that bit. That was, uh, <laughs> it was just so succinct. It was just so... And you know what else? To hell with Canada! We are leaving! We'll go find some quiet place where we can be normal people! Come on, wife! We want privacy! We, we want, want privacy. privacy! We want privacy! Good. Hm. Great. I don't care. Don't care. So I actually do think that uh, what South Park have captured in this uh, scene is pretty insightful, actually, because you've got Kyle who's going on about Harry and Meghan all the time and everyone's just saying, oh, just ignore them. Why do you care so much? And I think it's, it's kind of like people like us who've been making videos about Harry and Meghan for ages. A lot of people say the same thing. You know, you get the odd comment on Twitter or on YouTube where people are saying, leave them alone, you're just jealous. And it's like... Those people, I think a lot of them might just be kind of innocent and don't understand that once they're in your face, you can't unsee it. You can't unsee what absolutely pathetic, narcissistic, attention-seeking, sob-story God that they are, right? And so Kyle is living across the road from them. He sees them every day uh, in, in this episode. And they've posted, you know, they put their, their uh, magazine covers all over his, all over the front of his house. And he's just saying, okay, just ignore it because everyone else is ignoring it and getting on with their life. <laughs> I know exactly how he feels. What the hell? What did he just say? He victimized me! It's because I'm an ethnic woman! He can't do that! I'll say, wait, you're ethnic? This is an outrage! Yeah, I did like that little joke there. Well, wait, you're ethnic? Because that's something a lot of people are afraid to say. But it's true. No one would know. She kind of looks Hispanic, maybe. Mediterranean. Not 43% Nigerian, I can tell you that much. I mean, the other 57% must be Icelandic or something, because... I'm just saying, why am I not allowed to say what I see? <laughs> and I know I am allowed to say it because I'm saying it, so shut up. Stuart Lee, always in my head, making me feel like a hack. Well, just see how he deals with my blue penis! Hey! Has the respect for people's privacy! Hey! 
What can I say that uh, South Park hasn't said there? Um, it's brilliant, yeah. They're absolutely right. That's exactly what it is. They're constantly throwing themselves into the public eye very, very deliberately, selling their sob story, saying how they want their privacy, saying how they're getting hunted down by journalists. We saw the documentary series on this channel. <laughs> We've been documenting everything very, very closely for the last few months, and uh, I think we can all agree, right, that... Um, uh, the, the, we know, we know the score. That's right. You and you and me, right? We know, we know. But um, but we're starting to feel validated now because the counterculture agrees with us, right? Screw you, mainstream media, the Illuminati, trying to force uh, Harry and Meghan on us. All right. South Park has got our backs, and uh, yeah, I for one am very happy about it. I think they've been right about most things for the last 25 years, haven't they? Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, do all that kind of thing that helps the algorithm. You have no idea how much that helps me. And I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.